Hello and welcome to this project where I'm going to show you how to make this delightful little peekaboo um, greeting card. Now I've made it for a baby and you're wondering why it's a peekaboo card. Well if I open it up it reveals the secret message within. How cute is that? Let me show you how it's made. The first die that I'm going to use to make this um, reveal card is this die by John Next Door, and um, it has all the parts that you need to create the card. So that's the first thing. The other thing that I'm going to use is this set of 79 clear rubber stamps. And uh, as you can see, it's got two alphabets, a bigger and a small one, and three little sentiments. And it works really well with the mini bunting flags die. So you can really go to town on personalising your cards. And uh, I have to apologise for the state of this one, but it's um, I have been using it. <laughs> so this is the um, Cutest Clothesline by Sue Wilson. And I think you will agree it is so cute. And um, what you can do is actually um, mix and match all the different dresses and outfits for a baby on the washing line um, you, the washing line comes as a separate piece and then you have these little pegs here which are really cute that you can then hang all your clothes on so that's the craft die and the other thing i'm going to do use is this embossing folder oh i've got it around the wrong way hang on so it's got all lots of different parts of um, paraphernalia that a baby would have so it's got a little romper suit a little train toy bricks and it has the word baby love heart stars and it is really lovely dye i really love them not sorry it's a really lovely embossing folder i really love this one and the other thing I'm going to use is the Prison Ombre ink pad. So this one's really nice because it's got three different purples, which uh, really work lovely together. And they also work really well with the uh, matte chalk polish. So I've got Wisteria and Aqua, and um, these are really lovely and just perfect for a new baby card. These are the dies that you'll receive in the reveal card die pack and uh, what you get uh, is the base card so this is the base card and it will fold uh, double over and so you need one of those this bit here is the panel that hides the doors and um, so when they open they'll then open out and reveal your message it's really important if you're decorating this part that you get it the right way up unless you've got a pattern that it doesn't matter um, but with the embossing folder that I've got I need to have it the right way up so the, the wording reads correctly so this is the um, uh, bits that get folded over so this is the correct way up it doesn't matter whether you have it that way or the other way but you don't want it this way it has to be this way because then this die here creates the doors and you can see that when the card opens they'll slide in and out if you have this this way round this is a bit that's glued to your card so that there's no way for the doors to open unless of course you're doing one that opens that way but you still want to have this like that so that's the main part of the um, card then you also get this selection oh let me bring them in this selection of apertures which then can be used to cut the uh, little reveal window in the middle of this bit so uh, you've got a nice selection there and you you can even you know, see you've got different sizes and you can mat and layer them and use them not just for this card but for any sort of greeting and you also get the um, nicely shaped ones now just a word on the card i'm using um thick card uh, it's i would have definitely advised uh, at least 250 gsm because this card is quite heavy because there's a few components involved in making this card you want a really good sturdy card that's going to stand up if you've got quite flimsy card what's going to happen is it's just going to fall fall over and fold up and it's not going to be able to carry its own weight so that's uh, this 
the dies. So I'm going to start by cutting out my main card. And uh, I'm going to be quite, um, put it quite close to the edge. So uh, and I'm going to tack it down. I'm then going to, on the same sheet, I can then, because I can be a bit frugal, put this one down as well. So, uh, and then once I've cut this one out, I can then cut a second one out of, of this sheet for that part of the door as well. So I'm just going to um, put them down and I can run them through my um, cutter. I now have the uh, four parts of my card. So this one here is the base card. This one here is the bit that will have the aperture and will have the doors sliding behind it. And there's my two doors. I've put a T on here so that it reminds me that that's the top of my um, piece. And the next thing I'm going to do is to cut out the aperture. Now I've going to check on my rubber stamp that the wording fits inside and it does so that's okay so the next stage is to do a little bit of measuring so i'm going to measure the width and that's 10.5 10.1 and then i'm going to um because i want my aperture to go this way so you could have it that way if you wanted but because mine um, is a long and thin bit I'm going to have it this way so I'm then going to measure the aperture in these two on the width and that is 6.1 so then I'm going to take 6.1 away from 10.1 which gives me 4 and then divide that by 2 which gives me two that's a nice easy bit so i'm going to uh, just put a little dot from the side two centimeters in on both sides so and then i can just pop this back over now just remember you won't see those dots because you've measured from this line to this line you haven't measured the whole of it so that's that one. So now we need to do it the other way. So I'm going to measure down and that is 11.4. So I'm going to make a note of that. And then I'm going to measure here, which is um, 4.2. So then I want to take that away. So that's going to be awkward. It's uh, 11.06, 7.2. And then I need to divide it by half is um, 3.5 something. So I'm just going to go with 3.5 because it's not going to matter if um, it's slightly higher up. And then I'm going to measure down from that dot 4.2 because that's a little bit easier. So then I'm going to put my aperture in and check that it all, yeah, that looks pretty good. So then I can then just um, make sure that I'm covering up my dots and I'm going to use some not quite so sticky so what you could actually do is um, get your dots sort of lined up and then make yourself a little mark now I'm doing this in pencil so that's given me four little marks that I can then turn my um, die over and line them all up and then I can um, put that into place and I'm pushing down on this inside bit because it's the inside bit that's coming out and I'm hoping that not to lose any um, card on the other, other part of it so I can now put that through my machine so there's my aperture and um, you can see I've got my little 
pencil markings so I'm just going to rub them out so um, there we go and I'm now ready to emboss this part so what you want to do is um, just be aware of how your embossing folder works so um, this bit here if you run your finger across it it has the raised bit on it and this bit here has the dip that the raised bit sits in so what it's going to do is push your um, design through that bit so um, you just want to uh, make sure that you've got your piece of paper the right way round um, because one way you'll get an indent and the other way you'll get the um, pushed out bit so um, this is my pushed bit so let me just pop this there so there's my T um, and so I'm going to push it through and I've done it this way because these these bits here will fold over um, the way it's been pushed out and you've also got this slight um, raised bit here which frames it so I'm putting that in there shutting my folder now you can um, get it so that you've got uh, some certain bits in so i've got the word baby there so if i put it like that now i don't have to worry about embossing not embossing this top bit and the bottom bit because they're going to be folded over so i'm going to put it in like that i think that looks good and then i'm going to run that through the machine so now you can see I've done my embossing bit and it's all pushed out and that's what the reverse looks like so this one actually you you have to get it the right way around otherwise your word baby doesn't appear correctly but if you didn't have wording on there you could either have it either way so um so that's that bit done and the next bit is to do the coloring so I'm ready to do my colouring. I've just got a piece of scrap paper on the back. And um, these are your matte chalks. And they come with these lovely sponges which you can use. So I'm just going to try and open this one. There we go. And it's sort of a bit sort of like a jelly. So you want to create a ski ramp effect. So there we are. Now I would really recommend practicing with this before you actually do your actual one. So I'm going to, this is one I did earlier. So I'm going to take a bit of the um, paint off and then I'm just going to lightly run it across. Can you see it? It picks up that embossed. And I'm not doing it all over because um, I'm going to have this two-toned. So I'm going to have a bit of the aqua and a bit of the wisteria. So, so that's working pretty well. It's just really to have a practice before you actually do your real one because then you get the idea of how much pressure you can put on there. So I'm just going to now do across here. And you just keep building the colour up. I've now added the colour to the inside uh, with the aperture on it and whilst I was at it I made these two which were originally a pair of doors but I've trimmed off this part of it so that they're um, just an oblong and they fit perfectly on the front of your card and that will then tie everything in from the outside to the inside. Now the next stage is to put the word in, in on the inside. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to roll these round. You don't want a really tight bend. You just want them rolled round because you need to have a bit of gap between the two sides so that your doors can slide in and out. So if I show you. You need to have your doors to be able to slide in and out and if these were a flat fold it wouldn't work so that's that and then on the inside of the card just remember this is the outside because you've got this line here on the inside i'm going to just place this in between the two folds in the middle so just going to 
that looks about even and then with a pencil I'm going to put a mark in the four corners because this tells me that I need to get my rubber stamp within those four points so I'm then going to um, bring in my press and I'm going to pop it there and I still haven't found my magnets they're in some some really safe spot so I'm just going to use a little bit of tacky glue just to hold this not tacky glue tacky tape to hold that down so then I'm going to take my word in and I'm going to place it within those four dots and I'm not going to um, I'm not going to put it at a um, straight straight on because uh, I am awful at getting anything straight so everything with me has to go at a jaunty angle so that's quite good so then I'm going to ink it up with my ink pad now I'm going to aim for the um, these two here this one's a little bit pale but I think those two will fit nicely Hopefully that's it's hard to see. <laughs> okay. There we are. So you can see it's it's got that changing colour. So that's the inside done. And I can now get to put it all together. So the first thing I want to do is to add the foam pads to this side and um, these are my hunky dories. Now I always tend to um, cut these off because um, I'm, I find it a little bit easier to deal with. So um, there you go. So I'm just going to apply those to my um aperture piece i don't know what you'd call this really peekaboo piece because it is going peekaboo So then I want to, um, I'm just going to fold this and you can now see the difference between that fold and this rounded fold. But I'm folding this because then I'll be able to see where my folds are. So, because I want to place this halfway in the middle. So there we are. Now, if you find these foam pads don't stick because of the embossing, you can always, like this one's coming apart, um, you can always add some of your um, very sticky tape and then they'll stick. So I think I'm going to do So I've um, put the layer of um, the strong tape down and um, I'm now ready to put this into place now just keep an eye on the fact that this is going the right way if you've got writing on it if it's just a pattern it doesn't matter um, unless it's a specific pattern and that this is the right way and then it's just a question of popping it down don't push too hard because then you can um, lift it up and move it. So the next stage is to fold the doors and give them a really good press. Uh, 
and then you want to add um, some sticky tape to them and I would aim to be really uh, as close to this outside edge as possible. I'm ready to add my doors and I've folded them over and I've added some strong tape to them. So now I'm going to um, just take off some of the tape And I'm now going to position them in my card. So you want to slide them in and they need to ideally butt up with the fold in the card. So that's that one. So then when you're happy that they're lined up, you can then take out your blue tape, set, give it a bit of a press, and then oh, give it a really good press. Then when you slide it open, so, okay, okay, there, look. The, when they the person opens the card, their um, secret message can be seen. I'm just about to add the detail to the front. I've already put on the washing line, and as you can see, I've um, just chopped it in half and it overhangs, so I'm going to trim that. Um, but the other thing I wanted to show you are, is a, a easy method of colouring in these little pegs, as you can see they're minuscule so um, I've got a cocktail stick so it's got a pointed end let me just move that one out of the way so you hold one end oh fling it across as you can see you're going to lose a few of these so I'm going to hold it in place just run my pen down and then hold it in place again and just do the tip and I haven't been um careful with this it's just to give the illusion of um, the colored peg because I didn't have any uh, specifically brown paper the other thing that I've done is I've um, haven't added any of the detail you can see the embossed detail on here and you could go over that with a pen but I'm not brilliant at doing that so I haven't bothered um, but I have just curled it slightly so it makes it look like um, an outfit so just literally with your fingers just bend it round um, not hard just a soft bend and it then gives the effect of clothing then I've got a pair of socks here, which I haven't removed because they're so tiny that if I remove those until I'm before I'm ready, I'm likely to lose them. And then the last thing I've made is this little plaque to go on the front. Um, so uh, I have actually um, stamped this straight in a straight line, and um, this isn't. Um, bad rubber stamping it's I use the same ink pad that I used for the other one and this is I've just stamped it with the dark side on the inside this way then turned my ink pad around the other way so the um, dark side was on this side so you get most of the darkness in the middle and then you get this faint area here which is the lighter lilac so that's all ready to pop onto my card this is the finished card 
and as you can see all the clothes and the pegs have been hung on the washing line and I've put my little plaque on and then when you open it up there we go peekaboo